woman will require more and more of your essential biologically driven masculinity and in the end you will be helplessly immobilized. That's Burt Lancaster led to the armored car heist by his duplicitous ex-wife of Anta Carlo in Criss Cross. That's Robert Mitchum in Jane Greer in Out of the Past. That's Fred McMurray and Barbara Stanwyck in Double Indemnity. As a construction that talks about people, that talks specifically about men and women, put the misogynistic aspect aside, I dig it. You can be so sweet at times. Oh dear, I must rush. Film noir is the only type of film made at that period in Hollywood where the women were completely the equal of men, where they were allowed to be the equal of men. They are equally tempted, they are equally compromised, and they are equally guilty. Gene Simmons, beautiful, sweet little English gal, when she made Angel Face, that's like a freak show. <laughs> She's just very, very scary in that movie. Gene Tierney in Leave Her to Heaven, you know, she plays this apparently very angelic character in Laura that everybody falls in love with, but then she makes Leave Her to Heaven, and I don't know if there's a more psychotic female role in all of movies than, than her in, uh, in Leave Her to Heaven. I hate the little beast. I wish it would die. Ellen. Shocked, aren't you? If you were having the baby, you'd love it. Well, I never wanted it. Richard and I never needed anything else. And now this. How can you say such wicked things? Sometimes the truth is wicked. I don't personally like any of the film fatales in film noir because I go for wholesome looking women. I don't, I don't like the affect of cigarettes and red nails and plunging necklined gowns. I like the good women of film noir. I like Ella Raines, who works in a gas station above San Francisco. Sure. It's a hobby of mine. Start her up. OK, start her up. Who are some others who come to mind? Phyllis Kirk in Crime Wave of X Sterling yeah. Hayden. I love you. I wanted you, and now that I've got you, I care a lot less. I can't figure it. What do you see in a guy like me? I see a guy who's swell, who's kind and strong. That's what I see. I like Virginia Houston in Out of the Past, who's the good woman that Robert Mitchum leaves behind, rather than Jane Greer as the seductress. These are my women. I'm a wholesome cat underneath it all, and I want to go out and have the fucking adventures and then come home to these women who may reveal some dark appetites you know, to me after it says the end at the end of the movie. Your Honor, in view of the evidence presented, we now ask for a dismissal of the state's case against Walter Williams. And we intend to charge Irene Williams with conspiracy to commit murder against her husband, Walter Williams. Oh, no! You will see in almost every movie where a femme fatale is depicted, there is another woman in the story who is her antithesis. Well, that's that, Walt. Congratulations, Mr. Williams. <laughs> I haven't the words for it, Quincy, but we... We could never have made it without you. Ah, sure you could. You know, son, right always wins if you give it a little push, especially when you get a copper like this one to do the pushing. <laughs> that woman, I guarantee you, 100% of the time works for a living and is self-sufficient. She is a nurse. She's an artist. She's a designer. She's a magazine editor. She doesn't necessarily have a man in her life and she is totally self-sufficient. And to me, that's the astounding thing in these movies, is 
okay, on one level, oh look, they're depicting the women again as these evil beings that just want to destroy men. Well, yeah, but look at level two. They're showing you that the only way the man can be saved is by going with the woman who is self-sufficient and is a viable part of the workforce, which is a pretty amazing point to be made in 1948-49 in, in the United States. Laura had any breeding. I selected a more attractive hairdress for her. I taught her what clothes were more becoming to her. Through me, she met everyone. Men admired her. Women envied her. You have rarely met a girl like Laura. Few women have been so beautiful, so exotic, so dangerous to know. For years, I've been trying to get the assignment to write the remake of Laura. The construction is the greatest in Roman noir and film noir. A woman is murdered. She's a society woman. Her face is blasted off. And a lonely, haunted, handsome young policeman is assigned to investigate the murder. There's a portrait of Laura that's hung up in the place where she was killed. He falls in love with the portrait. Laura Hunt turns up alive and they fall in love. Turns out another woman was murdered. He solves the crime. It's everything I've ever felt and everything I've ever thought about women and crime and redemption. You better watch out, McPherson, or you'll end up in a psychiatric ward. I don't think they've ever had a patient who fell in love with a corpse. It's one step up from necrophilia, and he was very well cast. Dana Andrews looks like a lower evolutionary creature, and he's scowling. He looks at the portrait, and he's Beethoven. The look on his face is perpetually, Laura, I want you. Oh, Laura Hunt is my woman and I identify with this. I would fall in love with a portrait of a woman and burn my life down to be with a woman, whether she was real or not. That's just me.